it is a beautiful morning, August 25th. We just pulled up here to the Tennessee River. I've got my dad with me and I've also got my son landing with me, of course. We're gonna run up here below the dam, see if we can catch some fresh bait and then we're gonna do some catfishing today. So I hope you guys join us. Well, I'm relieved. I always worry we ain't gonna be able to get bait, but obviously we're gonna be able to. We ain't got bait. Yeah, we got almost enough to fish with all day already. We'll fill that up and then drain the water out and put some more ice on top. All right, y'all, so I'm gonna show you what I'm using to catch these skipjacks today. So I've got a seven foot medium heavy casting rod with a PC Fun reel, 30 pound braid. And then down here on the business end, I got a 17 pound fluorocarbon leader. I got a couple of jigs on there and then I've got a CC spoon on the end, but I took the treble hook off and put just a regular J hook on there. To, I think they, uh, Stay buttoned up a little bit better on a J hook. We're gonna catch, I don't know, probably 10 or 15 more of them and we're gonna call it good. We've already got plenty to fish with for the day, but uh, today's Wednesday. On Friday, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go fish the Ohio River more than likely. So I'm gonna try to get enough to fish with on Friday as well. And there's another one. All right, y'all, so we've got a cooler full of skipjack and we're getting ready to start uh, doing some drifting here in the current. Uh, they're not running any flood gates, but they're running two hydros right now. So we got just enough current to do some bumping, but at about 10 o'clock, they're gonna crank up a few more and we should have plenty of current to, to be able to move on down river and do some bumping about anywhere down through here. But for right now, we're gonna start out in front of the hydros. Once we get set up and get everything going, I'll explain to you guys a little bit more about what we're doing for those of you that don't know. Got that one, didn't you? Okay. Well, he's a wild one. He must not be too big. He ain't too big. Wow, Old dad nailed him. We're getting a lot of bites right now, but we're using fairly big baits. And uh, we're missing a lot of fish, but we're at, we're trying to catch the bigger fish today. People would freak out if some people would about eating a banana on the boat. Why? Oh, that. Supposed to be, some people believe it is bad you luck. Just catch bait off? I got fish. You do? Yeah. I was running a big bait and I was getting a lot of a lot of hits from fish this size and uh, I downsized my bait 
and caught me one. I'd rather catch these than nothing at all. I cranked the water up about 45 minutes ago, so hopefully fish are gonna turn on soon because it really hasn't been that great yet this morning. That's one thing I didn't mention, guys. I finally got me a new trolling motor. This is the first real day I've been out fishing with it. I took it out and tested it the other day, but this is the first day actually putting it to the test. It is a 24 volt, 80 pound thrust Minnesota Tarova. I've been using a remote control trolling motor for years, but I've never had one with GPS. If you're not familiar with these kind of trolling motors, they have GPS sensors in them, and I have an anchor button on here and I also have a heading lock button. So I can hit that anchor button and it's basically going to stop my boat and hold it in that exact spot. You know, it might drift back side to side or front to back a little bit depending on the wind and the current. But for the most part, it locks your boat down in that spot. And uh, it also has this uh, heading lock feature, which that's what we've been using a lot today. Basically, you point the boat at a certain object or point it in a certain direction. You hit that heading lock button and it keeps your boat pretty much exactly in line with the object or direction you pointed it at. So for what we're doing today, bumping, it's made a huge difference. It's uh, definitely gonna make my life a lot easier. These things used to be really, really expensive and they still are pretty expensive, but I picked this one up for $1,500 and I think it's worth every penny of it. Might be a better food. They can drag. Better one? Yeah, that's a better fish right there. Yep, yeah, not bad at all. Gonna need the net on this one. He don't want no part of that net. Oh. oh man, oh my gosh. He's ours now. That's a solid fish right there. Uh, I think he's any bigger than this. I wouldn't weigh him. I wouldn't pick him up by his jaw, but it won't hurt a fish this size. 27 pounds. He's just so fat. Yeah, just short, fat, 27 pounder. It's a nice fish, guys. We're gonna get him back in and try to get another one. down there there's more just gotta find them hmm. let's go get him so it was a pretty tough bite this morning but we stuck it out and we've ended up getting us a couple good fish on made the trip worthwhile and i want to talk to you guys a little bit about the technique that we're using today i'm not going to get too in depth about it because i've already made a couple videos on the, the basics of how to bump how to drift and if you want to check those out, I'll put a link down in the description. But I want to show you guys the rig that we're using. This is just a very basic three-way rig. I've showed it a lot. Some of you guys are probably tired of me talking about this, but it's just a very basic three-way rig. We got a three-way swivel. We've got a sinker dropper, probably about 18 inches long. I'm using a two-ounce sinker today, but you'll change your weights all the time depending on current and boat speed. And then we have about a 24-inch hook line and I have an extra swivel right in the middle. You can use one of these kind of swivels or you can use a regular swivel. And I have a circle hook snailed on and we're just using cut skipjack today. Pretty good sized baits. It seems like the bigger fish have been wanting the bigger baits today. So so we're getting ready to start another drift and I'm gonna walk you guys through exactly what we're doing and uh, try to explain it a little better for you guys that are new to this style of fish.
So our current speed is about two and a half miles an hour, give or take a little bit, depending on where you're at in this area. We have our trolling motor deployed and I'm running my trolling motor about on about half power. And we're actually slowing the boat down from that two and a half to two mile an hour current. We're slowing that down to one mile an hour current. So the boat is still drifting, but it's drifting a lot slower than the actual current is. Now you may be wondering why I'm using a two ounce sinker to fish two mile an hour plus current. And the reason why is I don't want my bait to stay directly under the boat. I actually want my bait, I want to pick it up. I want the current to pull it back and then I'm going to set it down. I want to pick it up, the current's going to pull it back and set it down. And that's why you see people lifting their rod up and down when they're bumping is because you're feeling for that thump on the bottom. That's how you know your bait's on the bottom. If you can't feel the bottom, you need to let out a little more line to get it down on the bottom. So you, you basically start out fishing right under the boat, and then you end up fishing several hundred feet behind the boat by the time it's all said and done. So it's a great way to cover water. Uh, you can put a bait behind every rock, behind every piece of structure, and you'll be amazed at how many fish you catch. Now, it can be a little aggravating at first when you first learn how to do this, but once you get your boat speed figured out and your sinker size and all that figured out, once you hook a couple fish, you're going to be addicted to it just like me. It's an absolute blast. I hope you guys give it a shot. Don't give up on it if you get frustrated the first time you do it. Just keep trying it, and trust me, it's a deadly technique. Talk about a thumb burner. <laughs> the big one? Yeah, he's taking drag. I'm gonna reel mine in. My thumb has got blue stuff on it. Where it, that line, I mean, it burns fire out the thumb. Let me, let me I don't want to bring him up too fast because then he'll be green and he'll go to thrashing around. I'd rather wear him out down there. Oh gosh, he just. <laughs> that might nice pull. Away. Yeah. Here you go. It's another good one, isn't it? Yeah. Don't fall out of the boat. Oh, there he goes, man. He'll... I got this drag too tight. He about brought me to my knees. He's about a 38 in the net, so he's about a 36. It don't matter. He's a that's a giant fish to most people, including myself. That's a dang good fish anywhere you go. Oh. <sighs> Still mad, eh? Who's not? <laughs> Turn that bottom end over to this. Right in the face. God. You're hitting, Help me, it's, grab it's, hitting it's hitting me too. Grab his tail. If you hold that tail tight, he won't move. I'm gonna go ahead and get him back. Cause he, right. he, no, don't let go of his tail. No, 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 no. Barely. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get this thing back in before he kills me. Oh, before he poops me. His tail's loose. Oh. Gosh, that was the meanest fish I've ever tried to handle. The disaster. I got some kind of discharge all over my arm is <laughs> some rough stuff there. He attacked and I had a flathead, probably 15 pound nail that gizzard shed, but I didn't even get set up over there until it stopped too much.
that's all that we had time for today. We're back home in Kentucky now, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I hope that next time you're out in some current, you give this technique a shot because I don't think you'll be disappointed. One thing that I forgot to mention is for you guys that fish off the bank, you can also use that technique off the bank. It's a little bit different. I've never personally done it, but there's a guy on YouTube that's been posting videos doing it and he's been catching some really nice fish. So I'll put a link to his videos in the description on this video. But I wanna thank you guys for watching. God bless you all and we'll see you next time.